Section 2.6 is about a set of very useful inequalities called the basic inequalities. It is summarized in theorem 2.34, which says that for random variables x, y, and z, the mutual information between x and y given z is always bigger than or equal to zero, with equality if and only if x and y are independent when conditioning on z. As a corollary, all Shannon's information measures are non-negative because they are all special cases of conditional mutual information. Now we prove theorem 2.34. First, we write i, x, y given z as summation over all x, y, and z, probability x, y, and z, log probability x, y given z, divided by probability x given z, divided by probability y given z. Now we write the summation over all x, y, and z into summation z and summation x, y. Now probability x, y, z is written as probability z times probability x, y given z. Since probability z does not depend on x and y, we can move it outside summation x and y. Now the inner summation, that is summation x, y, p x, y given z, log p x, y given z, divided by p x given z, times p y given z, is equal to the divergence between the probability of random variables x and y conditioning on a particular z and probability x conditioning on a particular z times probability y conditioning on a particular z. Since for a fixed x, both probability x, y conditioning on z and probability x conditioning on z times probability y conditioning on z are joint distributions on the same alphabet, script x times script y, we have the divergence between probability x, y conditioning on z and probability x conditioning on z times probability y conditioning on z bigger than or equal to zero. Therefore, we conclude that the mutual information between x and y conditioning on z is non-negative. Now, the mutual information between x and y conditioning on z is equal to zero if and only if, for all z in the support of z, the corresponding divergence is equal to zero. Then, we see from theorem 2.31 that this happens if and only if pxy given a small z is equal to px given a small z times py given a small z. That is, for all z in the support of z, for all x and y, we have pxy given z is equal to px given z times py given z or pxyz is equal to pxz times py given z. This is the condition for x and y being independent, conditioning on z, proving the theorem. The following three propositions are implied by theorem 2.34. First, proposition 2.35 says that entropy of x is equal to zero if and only if x is deterministic. Now this is intuitively correct because when x is deterministic, then the uncertainty about x is exactly equal to zero, and vice versa. Proposition 2.36 says that conditional entropy of y given x is equal to zero if and only if y is a function of x. Again, this is intuitively correct because if y is a function of x, once x is known, then there's no uncertainty about y. Proposition 2.37 says that the mutual information between x and y is equal to zero if and only if x and y are independent. This is intuitively correct because the mutual information between x and y measures the amount of information you know about y 
when x is given. If x and y are independent, then by knowing x, then you know nothing about y. Although these three propositions are implied by theorem 2.34, we nevertheless will give a different proof for propositions 2.35 and 2.36, because they provide different insights. We now prove proposition 2.35, which says that entropy of x is equal to zero, if and only if x is deterministic. We first prove the if part. If x is deterministic, that is, there exists an x star such that probability x star is equal to one and probability of x is equal to zero for all x not equal to x star. Then the entropy of x is equal to minus probability x star log probability x star, which is equal to minus one log one, which is equal to zero. We now prove the only if part. If x is not deterministic, that is, there exists x star such that the probability of x star is between zero and one, then entropy of x is at least equal to minus px star log px star, which is bigger than zero, because px star is neither zero nor one. Therefore, we conclude that the entropy of x is equal to zero, if and only if x is deterministic. We now prove proposition 2.36 which says that entropy of y given x is equal to zero if and only if y is a function of x. First, we consider entropy of y given x equals summation x px entropy of y given x equals a particular small x. Then we see that entropy of y given x is equal to zero if and only if the entropy of y given x equals any particular x is equal to zero for each x in the support. From the last proposition, this happens if and only if y is deterministic for each given x. In other words, y is a function of x.